How's it going, all you crooked cops? Dragast here, and welcome back to another episode of This is the Police. So, if you missed the first episode and are too lazy to watch it, the TLDR version, we are the police chief, and our goal is to obtain $500,000 in 180 days for retirement. This is a strategy game, absolutely awesome. We're gonna go on to, I think, day number four or five right now. Oh shit, we got another cutscene. Here we go, guys. Get used to these things. Whenever I'm alone at home, and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? To get to my front door, the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop, jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Laura doesn't go in for religion either. But according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles deserve at least a minute of attention. She patiently listens to them, asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch, and lit up a cigar. But a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly ask them not to bother me. Today I'm a little rougher still. Shut the door on his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol <laughs> pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. In my life, even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally when a wife is going to leave home, she'll make a scene or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. But Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but all three of our sons supported me. The in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. The fellow Laura ran off with is young enough to be her son. I hear he's 30 years old. Sounds like a nice with lady. all the possible information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get hit with that. Fortunately, Laura's mother doesn't like the way it sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. So we have an agreement. Sally's gonna track down Laura and try to reason with her, and we'll arrange a meeting. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to not do anything stupid, which of course means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a phone book. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. Hello? Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, is there any news? That's what I wanted to ask you. Have you found anything? An address? Phone number? Have you spoken to her? Don't worry, Jack. I've narrowed the range to two suspects, or whatever you like to say at your police building. At my police building, we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends. Oh, you're an old man, Jack. Come to your senses. They give us straight odds on the street. But I've got more energy, Jack. Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. And you have nothing, Jack. You don't even have a hobby. You got no passion. It's why Laura left you. Let's not wow. go back into that, Sally. Find my wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call. What a weird relationship. Laura, if you've stopped loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay? I feel so bad for this guy. He just wants to retire. His wife fucking left him. At least he's got some supportive sons. At least. I mean, that's the only good news I've heard from him so far. Okay, McNally, the newest recruit. I just love that beard, man. I can't wait to get him working. DeBrito, oh my god, he's old as well. I definitely gotta get rid of some of these old people. I can't fire them right now. I actually got to start the day to fire them. So I think we'll fire them at the end of the day in case they get discouraged and obviously do a bad job during their work. Uh, so yeah, we're not gonna 
promote anyone right now. We're just going to start the day, and hopefully it's a rather relaxed one. Let's go on to the second album since we learned, heard the first one, Bud Meads Bob. Okay, and here we are, day number four. We're at 6,900. We got a long way to go to the 500,000. Uh, destruction of property, a member of the city's cleaning crew saw an elderly man approaching some expensive cars in the parking lot carrying a long iron rod. The whole street could hear him shelling bastards, thieves, bloodsuckers. Someone is out to get a vengeance, so let's send out uh, a good even skilled and unskilled worker. Oh, looks like we do have a crime scene here. A homicide in the ghetto. Black activist Ronnie Moore was found shot outside of his home. Now, unfortunately, we don't have many detectives. You can see, you can hire so many detectives for a crime scene. Uh, so I'm assuming later in the game you're gonna get a lot more detectives. Right now, we just don't have enough. I'll try with three and see if we can solve this, but it might go unsolved. Uh, we also can hire one more person, so let's go to the labor market here and see what's going on. It looks like the max I can have, yeah, is six detectives right now. We have one officer in the labor market, Phyllis D Dowell for a pre professionalism of 130. I'm gonna disagree with that one, now I'm gonna wait for someone more skilled. Fire? What the fuck? Fire all black cops. A uh, racist gang has recently made some trouble in the city. They're capturing black townspeople and beating them to death. They recently sent a message to the local radio station promising to kill all the black doctors, firemen, and police. We don't need any dead police, especially not mere months before election. The races are gaining more and more followers and even some of our citizens support them. You have to fire all your black employees within the next two days due to mounting racial tensions. Why would that improve anything? How many- oh god, I feel so bad right now. I don't know if I should listen to this or just say fuck you. Okay, so I have three, four, five black employees. That's a lot of fucking people to fire, and I can't- Man, Stovall! My best fucking worker is black as well. I can't even fire these people for valid reasons. Oh, Stovall is technically too old. Honestly, I think I'm going to disagree with this and not do it. Uh, I don't know what repercussions could happen with that, but I know you don't have to listen to everything you, if you don't want to. Uh, so we got a carjacking here, a gas station surveillance camera recorded a car that's on the stolen vehicle list. We're sending out McNally for this one, and let's get his girls with him. Price, Austin, and... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love McNally. And the destruction of property report. Actually, both reports are in. Uh, offender caught, officers unharmed, good stuff. And the homicide. Oh, okay, so we do have a little bit of information here. So, still don't really know how this works. I think you have to piece the frames together. We don't even have any of the frames yet, but they will find them as they dive deeper into this homicide. So, we have uh, some clues here at the top, so basically just talks and everything. I'm gonna wait until they find more information. It wouldn't even make sense to look at it right now because there's so few uh, slides. So we're just gonna skip that and wait until we get some more information. Okay, we got something downtown. Oh shit. Carjacking in the suburb. The driver is nowhere to be seen. Wait at a safe distance for the driver to appear. Search the car or interview any potential eyewitnesses. I think we should lay down low again. I feel like that's the safest method and we might get some good information. Offender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. So we did that perfectly. Perfect. McNally strikes again. Okay, we got another one here. Suspicious indiv individual in Desire Park. Uh, Corey Ramsey, mother of several children, has expressed her concerns about a suspicious man wearing bifocals seated on the bench beside the playground. Oh god. He's been watching the children for over an hour and has taken several photographs of them. Oh, that is just wrong. We're gonna send out Purdy and Kochi for that one. Um, mainly because that's all we can send out. Let's hope we don't get any calls in anytime soon. Thankfully, uh, we do got Murata, Austin, McNally, and Kochi coming back to the station right now. Okay, suspicious individual report. Offender caught, officers unharmed, uh, good stuff. Purdy and Kochi got rid of the pedophile. Let's go see what this thing is. I don't even know. Dragon's Lair Club. Uh, Mr. Boyd, I'm opening Freeburg's first martial arts club, and for my first exhibition, I want to hold a sparring match where one of my students takes on your toughest cop. After the fight, I'll teach your man a few tricks, something that will help him out in the streets. Okay, well, we're gonna send out McNally for that shit. Let's get him some more street cred, shall we? And the homicide report is in. Oh, we got three new frames, so this is what I'm talking about. Once they find things, it becomes more clear. So, Mr. Graham, uh, they drove by in a, in, in a sedan and they shot like a machine gun. I didn't see much. Well, that's not very in, uh, informative. I only heard a few muffled shots. Well, Graham said it shot like a machine gun and now there's a few muffled shots. Uh, he got what he deserved. He's been causing trouble for a long time. And recently, there's been lots of cursing and carrying on. Okay. I don't remember the car, and the neighborhood was quiet. I've never heard any shots. 
Uh, so it sounds like it's a silenced pistol, possibly, but I'm seeing an Uzi right here, so I don't know. Uh, the police these days don't do nothing. I almost died myself. I went to buy some medicine and was nearly hit by some idiot's car. Okay, so I'm judging just by the very little information we have. It's going to start with this, go to this, and go to this, but I really have no idea yet. We need more information, basically. Uh, fight at Kevin Throat Bar. Kevin's Throat Bar? That's a weird name. A bartender reports that a couple of dancers started fighting over tips, and a cat fight broke out on stage. Alright, we got a cat fight. Uh, should we send some cats there to deal with the cat fight? I think that's a good idea. Let's send all three. I mean, we got lots of cops waiting for jobs, so I may as well send all three right now. Oh, shit, we need to respond to this one quick. A bartender reported that a fight has broken out between a patron and... And the bar's bouncer, the man apparently drunk, had climbed onto stage while a local singer was performing and tried to sing a, du <laughs> a duet with her. Great. Okay, so let's send out some decent units for that as well. Generally with fights, you don't want to risk it and only send out one unit. And the Kazuki Tomorrow Report. Chief, I just about nailed the Jap. What? Holy shit. A couple of times, he was too fast for me and won on points. I don't really understand all their rules, so I can't keep track of points very well. But he was alright, even showed me a few tricks after the match. I got carried away a little and pulled my back. Think I can have the day off. God damn it, McNally. That actually increased his uh, power a lot, or professionalism a lot. I think he was at like 200 before. Oh, shit! <laughs> Kevin's throw bar, we got a scrap fight! On the stage are two strippers going at it, and it's gone beyond arguing to full-on cat fight. The bouncer is fast asleep, clearly too wasted to handle the situation. Drunken patrons are happily watching the fight. Shut off the music and turn up the lights. Listen, girls, cut the crap, or this is going to get serious. Draw your service weapon. I think we're just going to talk with them. Let's not draw our service weapon and go crazy here. They're just fucking fist fighting. So listen, girls, cut the crap. Oh, shit. The strippers continue fighting, oblivious of the police pr presence. Ask the bartender for a bucket of cold water and throw it on the com com combatants. Step onto the stage and try and separate the girls. Watch the strippers go at it and don't interfere. I'm so tempted to do that last one, but I'm trying to play good cop for right now because I want to earn as much money as possible until I can get into the gangs. So I'm going to ask for the bucket of cold water. We'll see what happens here. Here. Uh, looks like that was the good thing to do. I, I mean, it broke up the fight at least. Okay, and the fight report at the other club, or sorry, the Octopus Restaurant went well as well. So we're doing really good here. End of the day, I think that was like a perfect day. I don't think we did anything wrong there. So uh, I'm actually going to let everyone go home. I'm not going to ask for any overtime. Let's let them get rested up and uh, make some happy little cops. So let's end it up. Day number five, July, and it's a Friday. Tire police officer Thomas Blaine shoots pregnant woman. Holy shit. Mayor Rogers City has no problems with racists. Yeah, bullshit, considering he just asked me to get rid of all mine. Uh, I thought she was a suicide bomber. <laughs> oh, yeah, good, um, good cover-up, buddy. Let's just say that. Okay, go to work, and we got another cutscene. Why would a man need a barn to store all the stuff you can't bring home? About 30 years ago, back when I was young and interested in farming, I carried all kinds of junk home. After a day in the field, I'd come home with buckets, shovels, dirty boots and clothes, and instantly transform the living room. But even back then, there's something I always kept in the barn. I stopped keeping my pills inside the house because every time I was about to take a triple, someone would knock on my bedroom door. Now they're knocking on my barn door. Well, fine. It's not every day that someone comes to visit your barn. <laughs> There's Kendrick! In all the years we worked together, Kendrick never came to visit the house. We drank at bars, went fishing, went to the mountains, even chased off some poachers one time. But he never came for dinner with the family. We never watched football over here. And now he's brought his friends to visit my barn. I always try to look unsurprised, like it's an everyday thing to get visitors at the old barn. Especially guests with their own personal bodyguards. But Kendrick is sharp enough to see he's caught me with my pants on backwards. Sorry for the surprise, Jack. We saw you from the car. Figured we'd find you in here. I'm going in for a minute, fellas. These guys will wait outside.
How long you been dating the lover boys? They're sans people, Jack. Yeah. So now you're appearing in public with members of the Mafia? Jack, I'm leaving tonight. More like fleeing. Jenny and I are taking the girls and making a run for it. Oh, Probably won't be shit. Seeing each other again. I've got new documents, a new name, a new life, everything new. The papers say you're still working your last week for the department. He's pulling the Breaking today. Bad. I won't be getting another chance. Don't know if you noticed, but the whole city is against me. You told your Mafia friends about your plans. Jackie, if I don't fix everything with them in the next few hours, they're going to kill me. And not just me. My family, my relatives, God, Jack, I don't know who else. They found out that I was planning to run, and they demanded that we close our contract today. Your contract, Frank? Really? Is that how you talk now? Maybe you should call in the lawyers to straighten all this out. Now is not the time, Jack, please. I have a commitment to them until the end of the year. They need an inside line at police headquarters. I and can't I'm going to be the inside give line. Them back the money. That's not how the mafia works. If I can't find someone I can trust tonight, I'm dead. You know me, Jack. I wouldn't ask you if I wasn't afraid they'd cut my daughters to pieces before sunrise. He's the damn fool who puts his daughters in the crosshairs in the first place. Yep. Anyone in my place would have dressed him down good. But I didn't want to pile it on. Fate's already got this guy's soul in the grinder. The crooked cop. Ah, uh, should I agree to help? I mean, I do want to get to know the gangs anyways, because I want to go down that street in this playthrough. So, I'm going to agree to help him just for that. Give I don't think he's a smart number. man, though. I think Tell he's a risky done. man. Don't call me. Don't come to work today. I don't want to see or hear from you again. Time for you to go. Jack. I... Get the fuck out of my nice, cozy barn, <laughs> Frank. <laughs> That's a great line. Oh, get the fuck out of my nice, cozy barn. I love it. At the time, I was trying not to think about what just happened. It was almost too much to take in. I'm probably the most popular police chief in the history of the city, and I have to admit, I've thought about that more than once, sometimes with a little pride, even. In one of the features they wrote about me in the papers, they said it pretty plain. He catches the criminals. Believe me, high praise like that is unheard of in Freeburg, especially for a cop. And here I am, the person who catches criminals, and I've agreed to help the Mafia, or I'll come home to a bag stuffed with my kids' body parts. Right before the last hammer falls. Hey, remember that cop who caught criminals? It turns out he was a Mafia bitch. And all for the sake of a greedy, corrupt cop who should have fled the country years ago. That sound right to you? Doesn't, but it sounds exciting. Let's just say that. I, I can't wait to get into the gangs, because I didn't actually get far enough into the game to kind of do that. Alright, we got Moser here. I was up all night reading an exciting detective story called The Last Temptation of Neptune. But I didn't have time to get to the ending. I'm almost certain the killer was the general. The house cat, you know... I simply cannot rest until I know for sure. Can I go home and finish reading the book? No. No, you cannot go home and read a fucking book. I'm too tired. I can hardly walk straight. Can I? No! God damn it. I hate fucking leading a police station. I got tickets to go watch a show of filming of a TV... Sorry. I got tickets to go watch the filming of a TV show. I've always wanted to be on TV. Can I have the day off? Namada, I'm going to give you the day off because you've been working hard. So, there we go. Let's start the day. I can't believe, like, three people out of the eight employees that I have asked for the fucking day off that's crazy all right let's go down a little bit what's this don't you leave me here P pierce pickering barrel house jazz band all right that sounds good let's try that one out and once again right away we also got city hall now we'll check that out in a second here let's uh and answer this disorderly conduct though every morning there's a dirty piss soaked bum sleeping at the cafe the man refuses to go away and growls at anyone who approaches Scaring all the customers. Oh my god, that's great. Let's send in Robbins and Samadhi. They look like scary guys, and uh, I think they can kind of scare off the bum. Uh, so let's go and see what's going on at City Hall. So I can make requests to the city. 
Uh, I think I can do one quest request every five days, so I can either ask for an officer slot or a detective slot. We're not having officer issues yet, so I'm gonna ask for a detective slot, and we'll see if we can get it. Uh, we got 33 seconds for this. Let me actually just see if we got any new good labor market. Again, just fill us here. Oh, man, I really do need another cop, though. This is actually really tight right now. I'm gonna risk it and kind of wait it out. Oh, fuck. Of course, we got a four-man robbery right now. A witness looked on from her window while an armed man with a stocking on his head entered a nearby liquor store. Okay, well, that's obviously not a good thing to see, so we're going to send out all three, and I think just for right now, we can always fire someone if we need to. We're going to hire on Phyllis for shift A. Now, I don't actually know if she comes in right now or if it's the next... Oh, did I not do it? Uh, let me go again. Phyllis, shift A. A, did it, okay, now it worked for whatever reason, but I don't actually know if she comes in, no, she must come in tomorrow, so that kind of sucks. Alright, 13 seconds, we got a fight at a residential area, a hot dog vendor reports that he saw two Elvis impersonate, impersonators grappling right there on the sidewalk. They're swearing in Spanish and beating each other with microphone stands. Oh god, we might not even be able to report to this one. Let's hope someone gets home quick. Oh yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to do it, guys. Shit! Well, let's hope this one wasn't that dangerous. It's just some Elvises fighting. I gotta assume that's not too bad, but uh, let's actually look at the report. We got lots of reports here to figure out. Uh, off offender escaped, and I guess no pedestrians were hurt, so at least that's good. Oh my god, this is... Alright, there's a lot going on right now. The shop has two exits from which a few people have already fled. Uh, sneak up at the back door, enter the store through the main entrance. No, if there's a, if there's another entrance where they're escaping from, you don't want to enter from the main entrance, they're all gonna run through, out. Drive a patrol car right through the fucking window. Yes! Let's do that. The stick-up man noticed the police presence. Yeah, I don't, I think you would notice it if I drove through a fucking window. And took the cashier hostage. Oh god, maybe I shouldn't have went that hard. Holding his gun to the hostage head, shutting back off or I'll blow this goddamn face off. Meanwhile, the cashier is yelling in an unknown language. <laughs> oh my god, quiet Abdul. You're just making things more complicated. Oh my god. Silently take aim at the robber. You in the mask, shut your face and drop the weapon. Uh, I'm not liking any of these. I don't want to take aim at the robber. I think they'll notice us. So I'm going to talk to him. Maybe, uh... Just visibly nervous. Don't shoot, please. I just need the money. I'll take a little bit and go. No one was hurt. The cashier begins to cry. Shoot the robber. Oh my god, this is like... If I make one wrong move here, someone could die. I'll let you leave here upright, but only if you release the hostages. There's two ways out of the shops. In cuffs or in a body bag. Let's be aggressive here. This, this might have been a bad idea. Oh, thank god. Okay, so sometimes you gotta show your aggression a little bit, and that seemed to work that time. He, the, when he said he was nervous, I kind of had the confidence that he wasn't gonna do anything. Jack, this year the organizers of the Golden Beast Hunt suddenly changed the rules of the annual shooting contest. It now features teams instead of single competitors. Can you send me two of your finest marksmen? I'd really love to do well in the competition. Oh man, I don't know if I really wanna... Well, I, I, I got 36 seconds to do that and we got something from City Hall here. It's a hot one today and a lot of people are going for a swim. Last week four people drowned in the beaches of Freeburg and the press was in a uproar. Please send someone to keep an eye on things. Why don't we just hire a lifeguard? Why do we have to send fucking cops to do lifeguard duty? Alright Robbins, that sounds something good for you. So we are going to send you out. Uh, we got another detective here. We got a robbery. I guess we'll throw on these guys to this detective as well. Uh, an antique Chinese necklace was stolen from Bao Ling or Lang, while she was on the way to a pawn shop. So her antique Chinese necklace got stolen as she was trying to pawn said antique necklace. I feel like this is a cover-up of something else. I don't know why, it just sounds fishy. Uh, how, how quick are we to get back? We got a bunch of guys coming back soon here, so I will answer this when they come back. We got nine seconds for this, though. Uh, just wanna wait for my guys. Come on, am I gonna make it? Yes, I should be okay. There we go. Destruction of property. Okay, well, this is a big one, so maybe I will uh, ignore whatever that other one was. Uh, at an art gallery exhibition entitled Sex Operation, a gang of young people in ski masks forced their way in and began smashing the exhibits, shouting, We don't need this shit in our city. Oh, wow. Okay. So, I am going to send in... Fuck, should I do all of them? I don't know how long this is gonna last, though. I'm gonna keep out Van Dull. I feel like he's going to be a good unit just to do some small jobs. And we're just going to avoid this uh, competition thing over here because it's not actual crime, so I don't think it's really gonna affect me much. He might have just paid me if I did do it. 
Fire all black cops. Tomorrow is the deadline. Uh, it's not gonna happen, guys. I'm sorry. Funeral. The woman was an honest servant of the city. Today she was buried with military honors. Rest in peace, Asano. Rest in peace. Got my weekly salary, 1,200 bucks. Don't disappoint, thank you for that. I just need 500,000 more. Uh, the robbery investigation has started. No information yet, so we'll look at that later on. Uh, but Robbins and Samadhi, officers unharmed, and everything went good. Oh, we got another robbery report. I got three new frames. Okay, okay, we'll look at the investigation later. Again, still not enough information. For destruction of property, officers were unharmed and offender was caught, so everything is going good. Now, how big is this? Okay, it's just a two units of vandalism. A guard went out for a smoke and saw a teenager writing obscenities on the wall of the building. I chased the brat up a tree. Can you take it from here? Okay, it's just some teen graffiti artist, so I gotta assume Van Dahl can uh, deal with that, so we're gonna send him out. And there we go. We got the vandalism report, which can mean the end of the day. Of uh, Unfortunately, somehow, the guy was up a tree, yet he escaped. Come on, Van Dahl, you could do better than that. Uh, so I guess that was technically a failure. End of the day, looks like tomorrow's going to be a long day. More like the first of a lot of long days. There's just too much going on. Uh, I don't know if that's a warning of, of something. Maybe I should keep some guys on for overtime. I'm thinking that's a good idea. Shero is exhausted already. I haven't even really sent him on anything. Okay, but I'm gonna ask Stovall to work tomorrow. I mean, he's just too high of a rating not to. And I'm gonna get Van Dahl working tomorrow because his stupid failure at the end there. So end of the day... And, uh, let's see if there's any more cutscenes. Thomas Blaine, pregnant woman killer sent to mental hospital. Uh, Mayor Rogers not afraid of the competition. According to Dr. Elon Ora Waterbury, Thomas Blaine has a new form of schizophrenia. Okay, well, Thomas Blaine is gone at least, so it looks like it's gonna be a relatively calm day in terms of news at least. Mr. Boyd, there was a man here earlier. He left you this. A man? What man? Who let him on this floor? I don't know. I've never seen him before. I asked him his name, but he just ignored me. He was talking on a big telephone, you know, one of those portables. He gave me this envelope and left. Damn. Okay, let's see about this. Of course, they could have shot them the second they took the photo, but I knew Kendrick and his family were all right. Either way, the message was not that they got out. It meant that I was in. My servitude to the Mafia had begun. I'd only been in my new position five seconds, and I already knew why Kendrick called it a contract. You sound doomed if you call it what it is. A curse. Boyd. Good morning, Jack. I believe you just Ooh. received my message. Who am I speaking with? Oh, I'm sorry. I forget some people don't recognize my voice. But I assure you, Jack, if I was sitting right there in front of you, you'd have no trouble recognizing me. Like I was a member of your family. Even better than a wife, perhaps. A wife can betray you. No man is immune. I don't talk to people who don't tell me their names. Oh, Jack, don't be so childish. You're too old to run away from strangers. Yes, we both are. And in our old age, friendship becomes rare and all the more precious. But of course, we must work with new people and find out new names. So if you insist, Jack, let us formally meet. Hello, Jack Boyd. I'm Christopher Sand. Wonderful, Mr. Sand. And what is it you do for a living? Oh, you'll soon find out all about that. <laughs> Well, you'll learn much more than a simple policeman could ever expect. You're a simple policeman no longer, Jack. Don't turn off your phone. You start today. Ooh. Sand is calling the shots for me. So we are officially working for the mob Eight now. In Great. Ten. It's been my go-to principle since my first day on the job. I've got to let my colleagues hush up what they need to, two out of ten times, so that they'll help me with the remaining eight. Eighty out of a hundred, eight hundred out of a thousand, I'm proud of those statistics. It's not so bad for Freeburg, right? But now I just officially became a Mafia whore. <laughs> I'm supposed to be fearing for my life, for the lives of my wife and children. But the only thing I can think 
what's going to happen to 8 and 10. Okay, well, interesting, uh, the plot thickens, I guess. We are technically working for the gangs now. I accidentally broke my bathroom mirror while I was getting ready for work. My dad has always said there's seven years of bad luck, but I know that's a silly superstition. It'll probably only last seven hours, <laughs> but it might be a good idea for me to take the day off. What do you think? No, you broke a fucking mirror. You can't, you can't have a day off as a police officer because you broke your mirror. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. At least not in this department. Day number six. Shift B is like the best shift. Look at these stats. Like, most of my police are better than average, which is great. Uh, basically, anyone I can send out except for Price is going to be quite useful. Uh, we got an attempted murder. A young employee at a, fa at a factory got into a fight with the manager and is trying to push him into a vat of boiling chocolate. Dark times at the Willy Wonka factory, I'll tell you that much. All right, let's send out McNally. M McNally's gonna be my go-to guy. He's just got too good of a beard not to be. And let's send out Purdy, just because I like her name. She's, she, she, she's a Purdy Purdy. <laughs> And what's City Hall got to say about me not firing all the black cops? Jack, you swore an oath to serve the city. If you can't keep your promises, we won't keep ours. Well, fuck you too, man. I'm sorry that I didn't want to fire people because of the tone of their skin. Already, the government is not very happy with me, and my request result has been answered now, and it's probably going to be a decline because of that. Oh! Well, he just said he was going to decline things. But now I can hire one more detective. Well, that's convenient. Let's see here. Professionalism 700. Chancy Newberry. I mean, you look fucking old, but I don't care. You're a detective. Uh, how many do I got on shift A or B? I wish it showed me here. Uh, let me actually go. I think I can go into my affairs, maybe? No. Actually, yes. It's probably in affairs and then police station. And there we go. We got... Three on shift A and three on shift B, but D Brito here, I might actually fire him just because he's so fucking old. Yeah, there we go. Let's just get rid of all the old people. Who else? Price! As much as I don't want to do this, but I, I have to get rid of Price. I mean, she's way too low. Okay, and that opens up even more slots for us. We're going to definitely put this one on shift B, though. Let's go back and do some recruiting, I guess. Labor market. Uh, okay, thank- I, I thought that I lost Ch Chauncey there for a second. Okay, we're gonna hire for Shift B. I actually might hire- yeah, let's ha hire Matthew as well for Shift B. I want a good detective crew on one of the sides, Shift A or Shift B. Uh, okay, over here, do we got anyone good? Oh my god, Tommy Everts! Not in the most peak physical shape, but goddamn, the professionalism is worth it. So let's send to, I guess, Shift B. Oh, fuck, maybe I shouldn't have done Shift B, because Shift B is just so stacked right now. Uh, let me actually go into affairs and, uh, kind of sort this out, because I do want to kind of even this out. So we got, how many do we got on each? Actually, we do have a decent amount on both sides. It's just my Shift B is a little bit more skilled, I think. So, I mean, still walls over here, so I think it's good right now. It's a good mix. Okay, we got a carjacking in the suburb. Uh, parking lot attendant Dylan Burns reports seeing a teenager walking between cars, trying handles in hopes of finding an unlocked vehicle before the attendant could approach him the teenager found an unlocked door shut himself inside a few seconds later the teen drove off shrieking from the parking lot greatly exceeding the speed limit he fled towards the suburbs okay that sounds pretty dangerous so we are going to send out our top crew to make sure everything's okay and the attempted murder report is in everything okay officers unharmed everything is good mcnally strikes again and the carjacking gets a little bit more interesting. The officers have determined the car thief's location, catch up with a stolen vehicle, and open fire. Holy shit, that's a little bit over the top. I mean, it's just a kid for God's sakes. Overtake the criminal and attempt to take him into custody. Overtake the offender and block the road. I think that's the best option. And let's see, offender caught, officers unharmed. Everything is good once again. Hostage situation in the suburb. A weeping child called in saying that someone was holding him against his will. They won't let me go outside. They torture me and bully me. I don't think I can keep going. I want to go outside and see Pete. Well, that is fucking sad, man. We're going to send out our best units to hopefully save this kid. God, some of these crimes are really friggin' dark, though. I wonder if there's going to be, like, extremely dark ones. I'm a little worried about that. Uh, but, you know what? We've already seen a pedophile, we've seen a child abduction now, it's, it's, it's just brutal out here. And we got a theft in progress, we received a call from an angry casino patron, he claims that one of the casino girls that was hanging around his table lifted his wallet, which was carrying a couple thousand of dollars in cash and several credit cards. Casino security shoved him outside, saying that he was drunk, but the man isn't giving up so easily. Okay, we're going to send out a decent amount for that as well. 
Uh, the Sands need help. Oh, the, this is my first request from the gang. Jack, we're dealing with a moron who refuses to repay his debts, says that the police will protect him. I think it's time we show him who this, whose side the police are on. Okay, do I want to send out Stovall for this? You know what, Price? Go show him who's <laughs> boss. I don't know if that's a good idea to send out my worst police officer uh, for my first job with the mob, but you know what? I believe in you, Price. Everything's going to be okay. Hostage situation report. Joseph Lowry's mother wouldn't let him go play until he ate his broccoli. Oh, the little kid fucking called in and his mom just had him and wanted to eat his broccoli. You gotta be kidding me. I love this, man. Sometimes you think it's dark, it ends up just being a kid who can't go outside from his parents. Okay, the theft report. Uh, I don't even remember what this one was. Fender caught officers unharmed. Well, it all worked out. We got 300 and 300. Man, my stats are really freaking good right now. And I think that is the end of the day. Oh, shit, answer it! Okay, assault with a deadly weapon. Well, good thing we answered that. At a parking lot, a security guard stopped a suspicious-looking van and asked to check the driver's membership card. The female driver reached casually into the glove compartment and then pulled out a gun and opened fire. Holy shit! All right, McNally, I hope you don't die, buddy. But we gotta get you out there with Stovall, Purdy, and... You know what? Yeah, let's do Murata. Let's get the best out there. I mean, obviously, when someone shoots someone, you want your best police on the scene, man. Price, how did the gang thing go? She came back, but it didn't let me know anything, so I don't know if they're happy with me or sad. Okay, I'm a little worried about this shooting, though. They have reached the scene of the crime, and here we go. Uh, police cruiser has caught up with the perpetrator's van, shoot out the criminal's tires, try and run the van off the road, use the bullhorn to order the van to stop. I think we're going to be pretty aggressive here. So this guy did get shot. Uh, should I try and shoot out the tires? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna be that aggressive. The van takes a sharp turn and crashes through a window of a sex shop. A woman exits the vehicle and grabs the shop attendant and puts a gun to his head. God damn it, we got another hostage situation. Of all things, a sex shop worker. That's gotta be a rough <laughs> night on the job. Let go of that man right now. Uh, throw rubber... <laughs> I so wanna do it. I wanna throw the rubber sex doll at the assailant. Uh, shoot the criminal in the head. Holy shit. That got dark really quickly. Okay, well... Either I can throw a rubber sex doll or let go of the man right now. I'm not going to shoot the crim- I mean, maybe I should shoot the criminal, but I got to assume she will shoot the sex shop worker if I do do that. So I'm going to say let go of the man right now. Uh, oh, that might have been too weak. Nope, okay, that was the good thing to do. Man, I'm doing really good at choosing these things right, I'll tell you that much. And the homicide report is in. We got three new frames. I forget how many frames we have now. Okay, so there's six frames now. Let's kind of look into this. Uh, they drove by a sedan and shot like a machine gun. We've already read all these. Didn't really give me too much information. Uh, so we are just gonna go here. These are the sequences. I don't actually know if I can... No, I can't change these. So what I can change is the frames down here. So we got Drug Lord. Is that the actual name of this store? Uh, we'll put that at the front. I'm assuming that's the start. I don't know if I'm doing this right, guys. I'm really bad with it. Uh, maybe make that first, and there's a gas station, so maybe something in here. They drove by a sedan, they shot like a machine gun. Uh, he got what he deserved, yada, yada, yada. I don't remember the car, and the neighborhood was quiet. I've never heard any shots. So, yeah, I'm really not getting much information. I might need to pull these guys off of this, uh, and put them on to something else. Anyways, we'll close that up, and we will continue when we get some more information regarding it. Okay, in end of day number six, everything went quite well today. We did fire Debretto. I think we got rid of all our old guys now, except for Stovall. Not getting rid of Stovall yet. He's too good of a unit not to. Uh, so yeah, we're going to end our day. Day number seven. We're on a Sunday now. Racist gangs run wild in the city. Second tower to be built in Freeburg. Investigation into Francis Kendrick could resume. Okay, guys, I think this one's getting a little long, so we're going to end this one here. I hope you guys are enjoying This is the Police. As always, guys, thanks for watching and liking, and I will see you in the next one.